Let's talk about SSD size versus RAM in these Apple new M2 computers. If you have an option to choose between a larger SSD versus getting more RAM on the system, and you only have the option to choose one, what's going to give you the best performance for that computer? Let's find out. This is Artis Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Should you get more RAM or a faster SSD? I'll be answering this question with a lot of data. If you have looked at different ways to upgrade M2 computers, you can spend over $2,000 on these machines by upgrading everything, which I highly don't recommend. But if you have the option to just choose one component to upgrade and just go one step up at $200, which one's going to give you the best price per performance? Is that going to be upgrading from 8 to 16 gigabyte? on the RAM side or upgrading SSD from the base 256 to the faster 512 gigabyte SSD to have two NAND chip running at rate zero. Is that going to produce a faster performing machine? And which one's going to be the best bang for the buck? Now, the other thing I also want to say is that, yes, the SSD between the 256 and also the 512 model, there is a speed variation. But if you watch my other video, I'll leave a link to it up here and also in the description below that the SSD speed for the most part doesn't matter in a real world workflow. There are only very few workflows that you're going to see the speed matters. And if you are using a computer in that capacity, well, you probably want to upgrade a lot more than just one of the other components anyway. All right, let's take a look at our test system. For this, we have two machines on the M2 side. We're going to use a 13 inch MacBook Pro M2, they're going to be identical. The only difference is the RAM and SSD. So for the eight gigabyte RAM, that machine is going to have 512 gigabyte SSD, which is faster. And for the 16 gigabyte RAM model, that's going to have this slower SSD at 256 gigabyte. I will also add in the result from two M1 machines that it the M1 Mac Mini and also the M1 MacBook Air. Something to remember about these machines is that the M1 MacBook Air is passive cooling only, so the timing is going to trail behind pretty much everything anyway. And I will also sprinkle in results from these machines as appropriate, but most of the time, don't expect to see many results from these machines in the lineup right now. Another thing I also want to point out as well is that, yes, I am using the 13-inch MacBook Pro M2 to run these tests. However, the result will be the same for the M2 MacBook Air as well. It's just that the timing may be slightly longer because a lot of these tasks run the CPU and GPU or the chip in duration. So on the MacBook Air, because there is no fan, the system is going to throttle. That means it's going to cap the performance in order for it not to overheat. However, the variation you're going to see in these videos are going to be very similar to each other. Remember, and this is something I say in every single one of my videos right now, is that there is a lack of optimized app. So just something to keep in the back of your mind as well that yes, many apps are native. However, they're not fully optimized for these new ships just yet. Because I am a pro photographer, what I'm about to cover will pertain to pro workflow in, in heavy, intense workload using raw files. However, if you're just a casual user, you, this video will still apply to you. It will show you the performance delineation between these options and you can make the best decision for yourself as well based on the test I'm showing right now. What I can tell you is that the SSD speed and size is really a non-issue as I showed in my other videos. If you haven't checked it out yet, I'll leave a link to that in the description. And let's take a look at the SSD speed for comparison. So on the 256 M2, we're looking at a above 1.4 gigabytes per second because Apple is only using one 256 gigabyte chip on there. When we bump this up to a 512, Apple is using two 256 in RAID 0. This is why we're getting the above two gigabytes per second read and write speed. And this is pretty much a similar story with the base MacBook Air. 256, Apple is using two 128 chip in RAID 0. That's why we're getting the higher right performance speed, but this is literally just only part of the equation and it really doesn't matter much at all as I've showed in the other video. Here's a speed comparison for the SSD for both write and read and I have also included a result from the Mac Mini M1 as well. You can compare that. And here is the speed for all the other computers with the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also M1 Ultra so you can get an idea. On these more pro machines, you can configure them up to 8 gigabytes of SSD and with those higher memory configuration, you can get up to 7.8 gigabytes per second. Let alone, there are no apps in the real world today that can really go in and phantom that kind of SSD speed at the moment, but sure, why not? Let's have the fastest SSD possible. Simply put, these computers are light years ahead of the software that we have available on the market today.
And if you want to know how fast of an SSD you should get, how much you should spend on an SSD, and here's a hint, you don't need to get the fastest SSD available on the market to use in your pro workflow. I'll leave a link to that test specifically explaining, outlining everything with a lot of graph that shows you a lot of data from the test up here and also in the description below. Remember that the components inside these machines are non-upgradable, so think about your future need. If you are going to store a lot of data, if you're going to accumulate a lot of data, you're not using cloud storage, or even if you're using cloud storage, you may want to consider getting a larger SSD. If you use a lot of programs that are system resource intensive, RAM intensive, for example, Chrome, Safari, opening a lot of tabs, multitasking with multiple different programs, you may want to consider getting more RAM in the system so that your system down the road can run smoother. And if you're planning to keep your system longer, it may not be a bad idea to go in and upgrade these components anyway. Now let's see the comparison for Lightroom Classic. Everything has been retested using version 11.4.1 running on Mac OS 12.4. Something to know is that Adobe have gone in and enabled GPU acceleration for image exporting, which reduced the time significantly on export. They have enabled this on majority of machines, however, on the M1 and M2 chip with 8GB and also selective Intel machines, even the Pro one, this is not enabled by default. I have a link to a video up here and also in the description below that I walk you through how to manually enable graphic acceleration. This way you can get the most performance out of your machine. So now let's have a look at the one to one preview for 1000 Nikon D850 file. This is really showing us a clear result that the 16GB model is pretty much coming up ahead by close to 4 minutes. You can see the graph right there. This is pretty much telling you exactly everything that you need to know. If you're finding the best way to upgrade your machine and you only have to pick one thing, I would definitely pick the RAM. There are maybe some situations where a larger SSD may help, but we're going to find it out soon. Here it is comparing with the rest of the machine, for example, the M1 Mac Mini and also the M1 MacBook Air. Let's take a look at export for 1000 files, those same 1000 files, and we can see the time improve by close to around eight minutes on this task alone. Getting 16 gigabyte makes the huge difference in the world, even though yes, the 256 gigabyte SSD is slower, but the faster SSD, what you're seeing right now, doesn't really matter much. And everything else is the same. Both of these machines still have 10 GPUs. So you can see that when you give Lightroom more RAM to really play with, it really just shines. Here it is comparing with the other machine. A couple things to really look at here that I find very interesting is that the Mac Mini M1 is holding its own just fine at the very top right there. So yeah, it has a fast SSD on the inside and also has 16 gigabytes of memory. But just something to think about too is that Lightroom Classic has been optimized for M1. Maybe not fully, but it is optimized for M1 chip at this point. However, it's not really optimized for M2 just yet because it is really new. Now we'll probably see this graph improve once Adobe have gone in to optimize the program. But you can see a clear difference between 16 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte right there. And also we have the MacBook Air that only has seven GPU, passive cooling, and also eight gigabytes of memory falling pretty much behind just right there. What about Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge? This is taking 14 Nikon DA10 file that are 36 megapixel, combining it to create a 314 megapixel DNG. Let's take a look. Well, this task clearly shows that having more RAM, having doubled the RAM here going from eight to 16 is reducing the time by more than half to finish this task. Taking a look at this with all the other machines in the lineup, the Mac Mini M1 again is holding its own just fine right there. And one thing I'll say right now is that the Mac Mini M1, there are many refurbished coming out on the market now from directly from Apple, you can get that, or there are used machines on the market that you might wanna consider that are really amazing performer. Granted, yes, it is a desktop machine, but if you're okay just getting a desktop, I mean, it's really a great value machine for the price. Let's take a look at Lightroom. This is using Lightroom 5.4 on macOS 12.4. And the result for this is pretty much just head to head with only about eight seconds apart. This is pretty much what I would call in the margin of error. Nothing is really fast or anything like that. And this is because this Lightroom is still using the old export engine from Adobe. Once I've gone, gone in and use the same engine as Lightroom Classic, we're probably going to see timing very similar to Lightroom Classic as well. The 16 gigabyte will still come out at the very top compared to the 512. And also Mac Mini M1 sits at the very top still. So yes, we're looping in a lot of Mac Mini M1, but that's a really great machine performance wise. Now let's look at Capture One comparison running version 15.3 on macOS 
For import, generating 5,120 pixels preview for 1,000 Nikon DA50 45 megapixel RAW file, we get the 512 gigabyte model that is coming in at around 14 seconds faster than the 16 gigabyte model. So the 512 one has eight gigabytes of memory. I would say that this 14 seconds is still within the margin of error and I wouldn't necessarily say that the 512 gigabyte model is faster. However, if this number starts to show a variation of about a minute or maybe two minutes or so, then I would probably say that yes, it is faster, but this is a very selective task within Capture One. A few things to remember too is that Capture One is not anywhere near optimized on the M1, let alone the M2. So that's the result you're seeing right now. The only reason why the M2 is sitting at the top and performing slightly faster than the current M1 right now is because of the architecture improvement that Apple has introduced with the M2 chip. So Capture One can go in and leverage that a little bit, but just pretty much on raw power and not so much on optimization. When it comes to export, both of these machines have the same amount of GPU and they have 10. And what we can see right now is that the 16 gigabyte model is coming slightly ahead uh, than the eight gigabyte model right now. It's not by much and I would still say that this is within the margin of error, but then Capture One doesn't really go in and utilize the RAM resource as much on both import and export anyway. So we're not really seeing that delineation between SSD speed and RAM usage in this situation. Here it is comparing with the rest of a lineup and yes the m2 is performing much better than m1 so if you use capture one and you just want a quick capture on location machine m2 may be something that you want to consider now let's have a look at photoshop test result for this i'm using digital loy test i will put a link to his website and also these tests in the description below i'm running three of his tests speed medium and huge you can kind of read the description there or pause this video but let's take a look at the photoshop speed so what we can see right now is that on the 16 gigabyte model it is performing faster at 70 percent memory and we can see that when we bump this up to 90% RAM, it is running slightly slower on the 16 gigabyte model, but not by much. We're talking about hundreds of milliseconds here. So I wouldn't even worry about this too much at all, but we can see clearly that the 16 gigabyte model is actually doing much better in this task. And also this task is just really running it based on speed and machine. So you're not going to see too much of a variation in performance. Here it is comparing with the M1 in the lineup and the Mac mini M1 is doing respectively well in these tests. And here's the result looking at Photoshop medium file at around 15.7 gigabyte. These are getting into the larger file territory. So what this means is that Photoshop is constantly writing to the SSD now. It's doing a lot of swap because once the RAM went out, then it has to go through the swap. But this result tells us a few things. At 70%, 16 gigabyte one. At 90%, 16 gigabyte is even faster because the RAM inside these M2 machines can communicate on the backplane between the CPU and GPU at 100 gigabytes per second. Whereas if you have the right to SSD, it's definitely much slower. So definitely giving the system more RAM is still much better than getting a slightly faster SSD compared to the base 256 one. Here it is when we add the M1 machine into the lineup, for example, the M1 Mac mini and also the M1 MacBook Air. Interestingly enough, the M1 Mac mini at 70% is at the very top and it's coming in really close by when we bump the RAM up to 90%. Now let's look at Photoshop Huge at 56 gigabyte. There are very few people that use this and if you are one of those individuals, chances are you're probably configuring a machine with a lot of power because this is a lot of waiting time. But we can see that when it comes to this huge large file size, 56 gigabyte, that getting a machine that has a larger faster SSD is of a benefit right now. So we can see that this is the only twist in this test that we see right now. So obviously, if you're using these computers for just daily tasks for Lightroom Capture One, Lightroom Classic, and majority of Photoshop tasks, you're not going to be working on a file this large. I would definitely consider getting more RAM in the system rather than getting a larger SSD because this is a really rare case scenario. Adding the two M1 into the lineup, this is how the performance compared to the M1 right now. Now let's look at Final Cut Pro. So for this, there is an encoder decoder engine which doesn't do much for H.264 and also HEVC. We can see that between these two machines, H.264, it's pretty much exactly the same because it's going into the encoder engine. When we compare this to the rest of the lineup, they're only a few seconds apart. This is considered to be within the margin of error. Same thing with the HEVC export, five seconds faster, not really that big of a difference at all. This is in margin of error. And when we add the M1 into the lineup, 
Again, they're only a few seconds apart, so I would say that these are performing just about the same. When we do ProRes 422, however, the 16 gigabyte model is performing that much faster because ProRes 422 does a lot of reading and writing. For example, this is a 10 minute 4K 8 bit 420 clip from a Panasonic S1 export to 4K. But when we do that in ProRes, this ProRes file is not just 1.5 gigabytes or anything like that. It's around 30 five gigabytes on the system, 34 to 35 or so. And this means that it's doing a lot of write, it's doing a lot of reassembling the file and having more RAM on the system is definitely improving the performance for this ProRes by quite a bit. When we compare this to the rest of the lineup, you can see that when we bump this up to 16 gigabyte, the ProRes performance significantly dropped and it's also faster than the M1. So obviously the encoder decoder engine is really doing its job very well on ProRes and giving it more RAM is definitely of benefit. But again, if you're doing these type of large files encoding on these machines, the base model may not necessarily be the one that you want to look at to start out with, even if you're working in a road, because I know many video pros and their goal is not so much to spend time waiting for the machine to export, it's to get the work out as fast as possible on the encoding side of things. So let's answer the question, more RAM or faster SSD? I would say that 99.9% .9 of the time, definitely bump up the RAM because if you take a look at the pricing comparison right now, they're both $200, but you get a significant performance improvement on the 16 gigabyte upgrade compared to the 512 gigabyte SSD. You've seen in all the charts and you can see now why I'm recommending that you go in and upgrade to 16 gigabyte SSD instead. A couple of things to note is that the SSD size versus speed is that it really doesn't matter. You don't have to think about that at all, as I've showed in the other video. But you can also see here as well that the SSD speed between these two, there's not that much of a variation. The variation that you're seeing right now is on the RAM side and the RAM that's with the computer with a slower SSD, the 256, is pretty much beating out the one with the faster SSD consistently in most of these tests. And I would say like 90 something percent of the tests so that's really awesome. Now, the other thing to consider is that when you get more RAM on the system, you're going to get more gain out of the performance of the machine for about the same price point. Anyway, I hope that you find this comparison helpful and it helped guide your decision on choosing which upgrade to do in these new M2 ship. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you're new, and in our trust.